Hey folks, we're going to take a more in-depth look at the entertainment and media industry. And really we want to just keep it at a fairly high level and just look at the industry as a whole. And then we can get into looking at the subsectors such as film and games and animation. We can get into those in a little bit more depth in uh, follow-up videos. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the industry as a whole and we want to look at it as an economic model and we want to look at it as an as an industry in and of itself so we're not so interested in the artistic content and we're not so interested in the technological advances we want to look at the industry as an economic sector and to do that we're going to use reports that are produced by various bodies within the sector itself so here we have the creative capital report on the left which came out in 2011 and that's looking at the Irish sector. It's pretty high level. It doesn't have a lot of detail. Um, the one from the UK in the centre has quite a lot of detail. And that would be an example of a report that was produced in conjunction with the video game industry and with the VFX industry in the United Kingdom. And that has an industry focus to it. And you could argue potentially an industry bias as well. Uh, and then the one on the right is a example of a financial report which has quite a lot of stats and that's to try and attract investment into the sector and that's by price waterhouse and cooper and these ones are more current these are from the irish government and on the left we have the audio visual action plan which is part of the creative ireland program uh, which is the government's overall strategy for the arts and as an offshoot of that we have the crown homework report which is looking at training and skills development for the industry and we also have an economic analysis of the audio visual sector within ireland and they're more recent reports. And I'll supply you with all of these. You can take a look through them. Uh, we do need to be a little bit wary of, uh, of these reports. They tend to follow certain strategies. All of these are produced by players within the industry. So they're not unbiased. They have their own ends and goals. You know, they're not academic reports in that sense. So you very ra rarely see overly negative uh, comments throughout them. But for the purposes of what we're doing, um, you know, we're not economists, so we don't need things to be black and white. We can use these as a structure to be able to discuss things in the industry and to form opinions that have a kind of a solid basis underneath them. Uh, some of these reports are quite detailed and you don't need to read them all by any means. In fact, the, one of the main purposes of this talk is to give you some of the key highlights. But it is important for us to have some kind of context for the industry overall and to have some kind of context for decisions that are made by governments that affect the industry. So how big is the overall industry? Well, here we have a slide from that Pricewaterhouse and Cooper report. And these investment reports, you can buy them, they cost quite a lot of money. You can buy, they come out year on year and they look at various different sectors. They're particularly aimed towards investment. So here we can see they've tracked the industry over the last few years, uh, which is what we see in uh, orange. And then on the right hand side, they're projecting based on that data. And we can see that currently in the kind of 2019-2020 cycle that we're sitting somewhere at about 2.3 trillion dollars overall for the entertainment and media market now keep in mind that will be film video games it will also be book publishing it will be radio and other forms of entertainment now we can see that this is a very healthy growth it's four percent every year anecdotally you can tell from the video game industry and from the film industry there has been a lot of growth over the last decade or so particularly in video games but both film and video games have become global media events we can also see this from some of the companies that are now very big players in this sector such as amazon apple and netflix that really the market overall has become an international market and there's quite a lot of money trying to win that market at the moment this is driving the entertainment and media sector, particularly in, in film. And Ireland has benefited from that. So from the entertainment and media industry, we're specifically interested in areas such as the games industry, the animation industry, film, TV. Uh, we we'll look at those in depth in other videos, but we can see that the games industry has a projected market cap of 137 billion in 2018-2019. And the games industry is growing very, very quickly. Uh, if we take a look at the film industry and we look at the top 20 films, we can see that 17 are visual effects, heavy blockbusters, and the other three are CG animated films, which utilize very similar techniques and technology. Here's a quick look at the top 10 box office movies of all time. 
and there's a link at the bottom here if you want to go look through the rest and we can see that avatar still sits at the top it's just nudging ahead of avengers endgame which has gone on an incredible run over the last couple of weeks and it looks like avatar is just going to stay slightly ahead we've got endgame uh titanic star wars the force awakens and avengers infinity war and if you just look at those across the top five it's worth keeping in mind that before those franchises launched none of them really had big name stars in them you know leonardo dicaprio and Kate winslet were at the very start of their careers in titanic yeah uh, even in even across avengers outside of um scarlett johansson and robert downey jr most of the other actors across those franchises would not have been household names really we can say in film across the last 15 20 years visual effects heavy blockbusters and the kind of techniques you've been learning across the other modules really have driven the film industry. Now that's looking at the industry at a very high level, at a kind of global level, uh, where the US and China are two of the big, big players. But if we come down to look at it at a more European, local level, we can see that the UK is in fact a world player in this area. And really, particularly in visual effects across the last 20 years or so, London has become the new Hollywood. And a lot of the major movies that you go and see in the cinema the likes of Avengers, Star Wars, Harry Potter. A very large proportions of those movies were built and created in the UK and mostly in London uh, across the visual effects studios there. And of course, what's interesting about that is Brexit is going to throw up quite a lot of challenges for that. So there's probably going to be quite a lot of opportunities for countries like Ireland to take some of that business. Now, the UK has also done very well in the uh, computer game industry. Um, would be considered a leader in that field also and probably one of the standout uh, titles to come out of the UK would be from Rockstar North which is a Grand Theft Auto series and again we'll look at the video game industry in maybe a little bit more detail uh, in another talk. If you want to know more specifically about the visual effects and games industry in the UK the next gen report has got quite a lot of detail in terms of what's happening over there. If we take a look at the Irish view we can see in the Creative Capital Report in 2011, it gives us some scope for the Irish sector. Now, the Irish reports generally tend to involve the film board, which is now called Screen Ireland, and tend to have a film and TV bias. So video games are not well represented generally. But we can see that the economic value is about 550 million. And a substantial part of that is from foreign direct investment. So companies coming in to shoot their productions here. Um, the 2011 report is relatively high level. Uh, it doesn't go into a huge amount of detail, uh, but it does tell us that there's about 500 Irish-owned companies, mainly working in film, television and animation. So so that report is a little bit older now, but it is interesting to look at that report because uh, of some of the goals that they laid out. So they wanted to double the value of the Irish AV industry to over a billion euros. Uh, they wanted to increase direct employment from just around 5,000 to over 10,000. And they also wanted to increase the exposure of Irish AV products on an international market. That was the goal in 2011. Now, the economic analysis of the audiovisual sector in Ireland came out in 2017, and that's a more in-depth report with uh, decent stats for the industry overall in Ireland. And one of the standout uh, stats that you'll find near the start of that report is that total for the Irish AV industry at the moment sits at, uh, sits at 1,049 million or 1.4 billion euros. So, uh, that over so that overall goal has been achieved and in general the irish animation sector and the irish film sector have done incredibly well particularly over the last five to ten years where the irish film and the irish animation sector are really getting recognized at an international level and there's no doubt that there's an incredible amount of talent in ireland but this growth has also been underpinned by economic support from the irish government and most of that economic support comes through a section of the tax code known as section 481 and section 481 allows for productions to claim back tax on their spend here now section 481 is aimed at the uh, film industry uh, and it currently applies to feature film tv drama creative documentaries it excludes commercials reality tv and game shows and let's face it it would be quite difficult to justify spending taxpayer money on reality tv uh, it does include animation but currently excludes computer games and that is quite significant for the games industry and the future of the games industry in ireland 
So section 481 is primarily aimed at the film industry or larger budget TV productions and allows productions to and allows productions to claim tax relief on up to 32% of Irish expenditure. Now this is quite a healthy rate when we compare it to international norms and is quite attractive to foreign investment in the Irish film sector. They've also changed the expenditure criteria in the last number of years. So it applies to all cast and crew regardless of nationality working in Ireland. And it is also available for VFX expenditure in Ireland. It is aimed at larger productions. So it is not available for smaller productions that have a production cost of less than a quarter of a million euros. And really it's designed to try and attract large film and large TV into the country. They've created greater flexibility in the process. So you can now submit for your tax rebate prior to completion of the project. And that's different from the UK and the US where you have to make the film, get an audit, get a tax return, make sure all the paperwork is in order and then apply uh, to get your money back. So that allows for greater flexibility in financing of projects. This 32% tax rebate then can be applied uh, for projects up to 70 million euros. And there isn't an annual cap overall, so you could have multiple projects running at the same time. Now, that is a relatively healthy rate when we compare it to international norms. So I think the rate in the UK at the moment is about 25%. Now, the UK rate is aimed at larger productions, uh, particularly on the film side. So the cap when I was there, uh, kind of up to about 2013, 2014, was something like 300 million. I think the cap is unlimited now. So it's really aimed at the kind of high end feature film stuff. For, and there is quite a lot of that being done in uh, London at the moment. Now, there's also a tax rebate available for the games industry in the UK. And that is something that I think will have to come in in Ireland if the games industry is going to grow here at the same rate. On the film side, I think that we're well placed to try and pick up uh, medium sized work. I think the larger work was to go to the UK and we will get spillover work here as the industry grows. Uh, and I think that that 32% tax rate is particularly attractive, I think, into the high end TV space. Uh, where they can be spending kind of seven to ten million an episode and they're doing kind of ten episodes so they're spending somewhere between 70 million and 100 million i think that will be quite attractive going forward so i know that discussing tax codes is not the most exciting thing in the world but section 481 will have a very very big impact on your career as you head into the media and entertainment sector in ireland uh, it's quite an attractive rate and as we'll see when we look at financing for games and financing for film it will attract big productions into the country the, the the problem that's there at the moment is that the growth of the industry has not been matched by the talent pipeline that's there so it is a very exciting time for graduates going into these areas i do think there's very real opportunities there to help encourage the growth of the talent base they've put an amendment onto section 481 so the reality at the moment is the tax credit uh, is 32 percent but if you run training initiatives you can claim back another five percent so for large productions across the next few years the tax credit will be actually 37 percent now that will fall over a period of time but that will mean that there's a lot of opportunities for people going into the sector right now and across the next five years so it is a very exciting time to be a graduate in this area so we've taken a very brief look at the entertainment and media industry and hopefully you have a better feel for what the entertainment and media industry is, how big it is internationally, and how big it is uh, both in the UK and within, our, within Ireland. So I think it's important, particularly in our sector, to understand that really we work in an industry that produces a product just like any other, right? Um, sometimes when people talk about the film industry or the TV industry or the games industry, the focus tends to be in and around the artistic quality of the product or potentially uh, if you're a student it might be in and around new technology or new techniques that was used in X game or Y movie and while those things are very important and are very interesting and one of the attractive things about the industry ultimately our ability to have a successful career in the industry and to have a long uh, fulfilling career in the industry is really underpinned by whether these products are successful or not and whether the industry overall is growing and so hopefully we have a little bit of a better understanding of why it's quite an exciting time to be involved in this area in Ireland at the moment and why 
I think that there is some very real opportunities uh, currently and in the future uh, for people with the kind of skill sets that you've picked up off of this course. Uh, so just to recap, we looked at uh, the overall uh, size of the industry. Uh, we looked at the size of the industry within the UK and then we looked at the size of the industry within Ireland. Um, then we spent a little bit of time uh, discussing the tax rebate can have a fairly big impact on the industry across uh, the next number of years. We'll look at those industries in more detail uh, across further videos and we'll look at how games and films are financed um, and some of the, the issues in and around that. Uh, so just to finish off this video, I'm going to post up some links for some sites that you should become familiar with. Uh, and again, these are sites that are looking at industry related issues across the different sectors of the entertainment and media industry. We have quite a few different sites here and I'm not going to go down through them all, but I will pull up just uh, a couple of them. Uh, just some sites to be uh, aware of. So the Hollywood Reporter is good for uh, general industry things. Uh, and again, you know, there's a lot of publicity on these things, but it gives you a kind of a look into the background of the film industry and particularly the, the bigger features. Uh, variety can be interesting at times uh, and can give you an insight into what's happening um, and what's upcoming in the industry. Uh, Cartoon Brew is quite good for looking at animated TV shows and animated features. Um, FX Guide is quite a good site uh, for getting insight into the visual effects industry. Now this one has a lot of uh, technical write-ups but it also has some very interesting backgrounds, some very interesting podcasts and write-ups relating to the industry uh, from a visual effects point of view. Um, the GamesIndustry.biz is looking at the background to the games industry. Uh, Screen Ireland is the new name for the Irish Film Board and you'll find uh, lots of interesting information about current and upcoming opportunities for Irish productions and they have a research and data section uh, which you can also look through which has statistics relating to the Irish industry and a lot of these statistics are coming from those reports that I mentioned earlier and Screen Ireland would have hev been heavily involved in those reports. Uh, IFTN which is the Irish Film and Television Network is a good generalised Irish site to be looking at and has lots of information about things that are currently happening in the Irish uh, production sector um, and also has a good jobs listing and lots of those jobs listings at the moment are for CG related roles. Uh, Screen Skills Ireland is the training initiative set up by the uh, by Screen Ireland which is the film board. This is a good site for finding um, information about upcoming training events particularly more short term or quite specific training events um, so they might run a weekend course or a five day course on a very specific subject. They also bring in guest speakers and that can be uh, worth keeping an eye on. Uh, animation Ireland is a website that represents most of the main animation studios in Ireland and again there's a job listing up here and Immert is a games association for Ireland and they're relatively new in the last three or four years and they represent uh, game makers across the country. So all of those sites are well worth keeping an eye on uh, in terms of getting a better feel for what's happening in the industry both internationally and nationally. There are also a lot of conferences and exhibitions that run both internationally and nationally. These are great places to find out about the latest cutting edge technology and techniques and there's usually lots of presentations at these, uh, these events. Uh, but there's also lots of opportunities to meet industry uh, players including HR for large companies and uh, well-known artists. And again, I'm not going to go through all of these, uh, but I will touch on some of them. Uh, so the Game Developer Conference runs in San Francisco and is aimed at new developments within the gaming industry, both the technology and the general business of making games. There's a lot of talks at these events. There's something called the GDC Vault where they keep a lot of the best talks so you can watch uh, so you can watch those online. Uh, SciGraph is a very well-known uh, graphics and technology conference uh, in the States as well. And a lot of the key talks that go on here you see in big productions a year or two later and then four or five years later make their way into Maya and Houdini and Nuke. Uh, FMX is a little closer to home. FMX is over in Germany. And again, there'll be lots of industry kind of keynote speakers, lots of opportunities to meet people in the industry. Annecy is a very well-known um, animation festival in France. A little closer to home, Animation Dingle 
is uh, Ireland's kind of premier animation festival at the moment. And that runs around St. Paddy's Day generally. Uh, tickets for that have got a little bit more expensive in the last little while. But we have had exhibitions go down there and we've had students. Um, we've had, and we've had students from the animation course. Um, and we've had students from the animation course showing at that. Uh, so that could be well worth considering. Uh, there's also the Galway Film Fla, the Dublin International Film Festival, and Kilkenny has a new animation festival that has kicked off last year uh, that will be running into next year as well. So they'd all be worth uh, penciling into your diary and to try and get a feel for what's happening.